Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So we have more attacks we want to make, including Gaster Blasters. Everyone's been asking when we're going to do that, so don't worry, it is still coming. But this week, let's take a break from doing attacks and let's make a start on our menu system. So I've got this animated GIF here with the four different buttons that we need to make. We need to animate them so that they turn yellow when selected. And you'll notice that the player heart that moves around is also going to go on top of the buttons when we're selecting them. So let's go to our Undertale Scratch project. Now, one thing you might need to do is go to your box sprite, go to costumes, and you might need to move this up a little bit if you don't have enough space underneath your HP bar. You don't need to move it up by a lot because we don't actually need that much space for these four buttons. But if you think you need a bit of extra space, then just use the select tool, select everything, move it directly up, probably using the up arrow on your keyboard. What we'll do now is we'll make a start on creating our menu buttons. So go to the bottom right corner, um, hover over where it says choose a sprite, then move up two to paint, click on that. We need to get these orange squares, then inside there's going to be a symbol and also some text. So I'm going to select this rectangle. I'm going to make sure that the fill is set to nothing and the outline is set to orange. And we're going to make a rectangle. Now this is a bit too thin, so I'm going to increase the outline thickness to about eight. And that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to center this rectangle here. And then I'm going to get the text tool. I'm going to select my favorite font, the pixel font. You can select whatever font you like. I'm just going to type in fight. Let's make sure that the orange, so if we use this tool here, we can make sure it's the same orange as our rectangle. Now, the nice thing about these is you can see that the font's actually quite squished when it needs to be. So that means we can squish our fonts as much as we want. Stretch them, make sure you leave a nice, generous gap right here. I'm just going to make my rectangle a little bit shorter, I think. Make sure the whole thing is centered. Now we need to draw that little sword symbol that's next to where it says fight. I'm just going to do this nice and simply with this tool here. I'm just going to draw a line like this and a line like this. Then what we need to do is we need to make sure that we name this costume fight. Now make sure that you're happy with this button. Make sure that you're, because we're going to copy this and use it to make the other buttons. And we're going to do that now. We're going to duplicate and we're going to call this second costume act. So we need to select this text, double click on it, and then you should be able to type in act. And then you should be able to stretch this. We're going to delete this little sword symbol. And what symbol do we need for act? It's sort of three curly um, lines. So I'm going to use the line tool and make three straight lines to start off with. And then I'm going to use this tool here to add in some extra points to make them curly. And you can change how rounded they are as well by dragging these little sort of diamond shapes. We're going to make the next button. We're going to right click and duplicate. The next button is called item. Name it up here. Let's double click on this text here, type in item, squish this down so that it fits. And to make that kind of little pouch shape, I'm going to start off with 
a circle and I'm going to make the fill the same orange and I'm going to make it so there's no outline. So I'm going to use this tool, the reshape tool, to again just turn it into a bit of a pouch. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make another little circle and I'm going to make this the top part of the pouch. Okay, I quite like that. Now there's a little black bit in the middle and I think in the original Undertale it was like a sort of circle. So I'm going to make a little circle here with zero fill. I'm going to make the outline black, make that a bit thicker, maybe a little thinner again. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then we're going to make our final button. And this is going to be called Mercy. And that's got like a little cross symbol there, sort of X. So again, let's double click, let's type in Mercy. Let's squish this down and make a nice thick cross. And we can even reshape it. So now we're going to put some code into our new sprite. First, we should name it. So just click here and name this menu. Then we're going to go across to the code and we're going to go to events, the yellow category and pull out a when green flag clicked. We're going to go to looks, the purple category and we're going to pull out a set size to 100% and then we're going to pull out a hide and put it underneath. Switch costume to, we're going to switch the costume to fight and then we're going to go to motion. We're going to pull out a go to X, Y and let's make the Y maybe minus 160. Let's see what that looks like. And let's make the X minus 180. Um, then we're going to make some clones of this sprite. We're going to go to control. We're going to pull out a repeat. And we're going to make it a repeat four and we're going to pull out create clone of myself. We're going to go to motion and pull out a change X by. Now you can change these numbers later. This is going to be the gap between each of the four buttons. So if we've got four buttons, there are three gaps in between. So I'm going to say that this is 120 if you want to change this number to make the gap shorter, there maybe change also the starting X so that they're still nicely centered. And we're going to go to looks and we're going to pull out next costume to make sure that we've got four different buttons. And because we've hidden our original, we need to make sure that our clones show themselves. So let's go to control pull out when I start as clone, go to looks and pull out a show. So let's see what that looks like. Let's hit go. So these buttons are looking pretty good. They're a little bit large. So I'm going to try setting the size to 70%. And I'm pretty happy with that. So now we need to figure out how are we going to make our menu system work? In an Undertale game, there are lots of different things that you can be doing, and we're going to need to figure out a way of turning off different parts of our code, um, depending on what particular option we're exploring. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a variable, and that variable is going to keep track of what we are currently doing in the game. So we're going to go to variables, the orange category on the left, 
We're going to go to the top left corner and click on make a variable. And we're going to call this variable mode. And we're going to make sure that it's for all sprites. And then we're going to press OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that there is a mode that controls when the projectiles are being generated. So we're going to go to our projectile sprite and we're going to look around until we find the when green flag clicked. It's got our go to back layer and a bunch of setting variables, then a hide and then our forever loop. Now this forever loop this contains all of our attacks. We can decide which attacks and in what order they happen. We are going to go to control and we're going to get out an if then and we're going to put that inside the forever loop but around everything that's inside it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to operators and we're going to pull out an equals operator and put it in between the if and the then. Then we're going to go to variables and we're going to pull out our mode variable, put it into that first socket of our equals operator and click on this 50. We're gonna set the mode to evade. So now if our mode variable is evade, then it will do the attacks. And only then, if the mode is anything else, it's not going to do them. So what we're going to do now is at the end of the attack, we're going to set the mode back to menu. So pull out set, put it at the very bottom, but still inside the if, select the variable as the mode variable, and we're going to name this menu. It's very important that you spell all of this correctly. So double check, otherwise it won't work the way we want it to. One more thing that we're going to do is while we're here, we're going to go to control, we're going to pull out wait one seconds and put it right above the forever. This is just a little trick to make sure that the mode variable has been updated when we start the game before it starts firing off any attacks. So next thing that we need to do is we need to update some of the code in our heart. So go to your heart sprite here. Now, if you look for your when green flag clicked, you should find we've got this forever move up, left, down and right. So get all of these my blocks, move them up and we're going to create a new my block and we are going to click on make a block and we're going to call this evade. Now these are all the codes that are going to run for our heart when we are in the evade mode. So press OK, pull, put define evade over our move up, move left, move down, move right, and then go to control, pull out an if then, go to operators, get out an equals, go to variables, Pull out our mode and we're going to type in evade. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get out an evade block and put it inside. So all of our movement controls are only going to happen when we are in the evade mode. Put your mouse over the if, right click and then duplicate it and put this directly below. I'm going to zoom in so it's nice and easy to see. Um, we're going to get rid of this evade here. And we're going to click here on, and we're going to type in menu. We're going to have a whole bunch of different things that happen when we are in the menu mode. So let's go to my blocks. Let's click on make a block. And let's call this menu and press OK. Now move define menu down by itself, make sure there's plenty of space underneath it and grab this menu and put it inside our if mode equals menu. Now 
When we are in the menu mode, can you see what the heart's doing? It's moving between the different buttons. It's not in the middle, moving around like we are in the evade mode. So we need to put some code in that keeps track of which button the heart is on top of. To do that, we are going to use a variable, of course. So go to variables, click on make a variable, and let's name this variable menu button selected. Now press OK here. Now we are going to use a number to keep track of which of these four buttons we've selected. Zero is going to be fight, one is going to be act, two is going to be item, and three is going to be mercy. Why don't we use one, two, three, four? You'll find out later, trust me. So we're going to go to control, and we're going to get out an if then. Now remember, all of the code that we made to move our heart around when we're evading the projectiles isn't going to work when we're in the menu mode. So we can use the left and right arrow keys to do something very different when we're in the menu mode. So let's go to sensing and pull out a key space pressed, put it in between the if and the then, change it to left arrow, then go to variables and get out change menu button selected by minus one. Right click on this if, duplicate it and change the second one to right arrow makes the menu button selected go up by one. We need to make sure that we're in the menu mode when the game starts. So go looking for when green flag clicked and get out a set variable, put it underneath when green flag clicked and set mode to menu. So now when we hit the green flag, the mode should be menu, that's good. So now keep an eye on this number here, this menu button selected. If we go left, it, the number is going down into the minus numbers, and if we go right, it's going up. Now we don't want this number to go below zero, and we don't want it to go above four. So let's put some extra code in. Let's get out an if then, and put it around our change menu button selected by minus one, and go to operators, and get out a more than operator. And then go to variables, get out menu button selected. And so if menu button selected is more than zero. So now when we try and go left, we cannot go lower than zero. Good, that's good. Let's do the same thing for our right arrow. We don't want to go above three, remember? So go to control, get out an if then, go to operators, get out a less than, go to variables, get out menu button selected, and select this 50 and change it to three. Now we need the heart to actually move between the buttons. So let's set the Y first. Let's go to motion. Let's get out set Y. Let's have a look. What's the Y coordinate of our uh, menu? It's a uh, minus 160. So let's do the same thing here. Let's set Y to minus 160. Pull out a set X. Put that underneath our set Y. Let's start off by setting X to minus 180. So now we're gonna do some clever maths with our menu button selected variable. Now, do you remember what the gap was that you made? Um, mine was change X by 120. If yours is different in your menu sprite, then use this, then use that number. But for me, I'm using 120. That's the gap between the different buttons. So let's go to operators and let's pull out multiplied by, let's just put it off by itself for now. And let's go to variables and pull out 
menu button selected. And then into the other slot, type in your gap. So for me, that's 120 pixels. So now we are going to use this number, times it by the gap, and then our heart will know how far right it needs to go. So we're going to go to operators, pull out a plus operator, an addition operator, and put it inside our set X2. Uh, click on that first slot and type in minus 180, and then take this whole thing, 120 times menu button selected, and put it into the second slot. So let's test it. Okay, it's moving between the buttons, which is good. It's behind the buttons, which is not good. And it's in the middle of the buttons, which is not good. We want it to be off to the left a little bit. Um, so let's fix those two problems, shall we? Let's go to looks, the purple category, and look for go to front layer. Drag that out and put it underneath define menu. Let's hit go. Excellent, now our heart is on top of the buttons, that's good. And now, if we want our heart just to be a little bit more to the left, all we need to do is change this number here, minus 180. Click on that one. Let's try minus 200. Okay, that's getting there. Let's make it a little bit more, uh, further left. Let's try minus 205. Okay, that's perfect. Now I'm gonna move the heart a little bit higher. So I'm going to select this minus 160 and change that to minus 158. Oh, that looks pretty good. I like the way that heart is centered now. Now, as you're pressing left and right, you'll notice that it's sort of a bit slippery to control. You end up going more than one button to the left and right. So let's put in some code that fixes that, shall we? So we're going to start off just by putting in a simple weight. So let's go to control, get out weight one seconds, and put it underneath change menu button selected. Let's make this 0 0.1 seconds. And let's do the same thing underneath the other change menu button selected. Let's give that a test, shall we? This is good. I'm not moving more than one button anymore, but it's a little bit annoying how there's this pause. It feels like the game is lagging, which it isn't, but it feels like it is. To fix that, we're going to do something nice and simple. We've got our set X2. We're going to duplicate this, so make sure that you're happy with the numbers first. Get rid of everything that was underneath that duplicate that we just made. And we're going to duplicate this one and we're going to put it above our weight 0.1 seconds and put this one above our weight 0.1 seconds. This is going to make sure that it updates where the heart is and then puts in that weight. That's really satisfying. I'm really happy with that. Now the next thing is we need these buttons to light up yellow when they've been selected and we need the little symbol next to the word to disappear because the heart is going to sit in its place. Let's go to our menu button. Let's go to costumes up in the top left corner. Let's duplicate our first costume fight. And we need to drag this duplicate, this fight to down until it's costume number five. And we're gonna rename this costume as fight selected. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this symbol here and we're going to make this rectangle yellow. And I think I quite like the color 17. I'm gonna do the same thing for the text here. And let's do the same thing for um, our act button. Right click and duplicate, drag act two down until it's costume number six, rename it to act selected, and change these until they are yellow, delete the symbol, 
do the same thing for item. And the same thing for mercy. Now make sure that your first four costumes are fight, act, item and mercy and then costumes five, six, seven and eight are fight selected, act selected, item selected and mercy selected. So now we need to code our clones to swap between two different costumes. Fight needs to swap between fight and fight selected. So let's go back to the code. We're going to need to create a variable so that each of the buttons knows which button it's supposed to be. We're going to go to variables and click on make a variable. We're going to make sure that it's for this sprite only because it has to be unique to ind each individual clone. And we're going to call this variable index. Press OK. Now we already have a really handy variable that's keeping track of which button we've selected. It's our menu button selected variable. And do you remember what the numbers represent? Zero represents fight, one represents act, two represents item, and three represents mercy. So we're going to set the index to line up with those same numbers. So we're going to get a set index and we're going to use the costumes as a nice easy way of setting these numbers when these clones are first created. So let's go to looks and pull out costume number and put that over the zero. There's one little thing we need to change though. Remember these costume numbers are going to be different. Fight is one, act is two, item is three and mercy is four. So we just need to take away one so that it lines up nicely with our other variable. So let's go to operators and pull out a minus or subtraction operator. Let's get our costume number and let's take this whole thing, put it back into that zero and type in one. Now we're going to put some code right here underneath where it says show. The first thing is we want to make sure that these buttons are only visible when we are not in the evade mode. Let's zoom in so you guys can see this a bit better. We're going to go to control, pull out an if then else, put that underneath the show here, go to operators, pull out an equals operator, and then go to variables, pull out mode, put that into the first socket and then type into where we've got the 50, evade. If we're in the evade mode, which is the projectiles coming at us, we want these buttons to hide themselves. Let's go to looks and get out hide. Put that underneath the if. Then let's get out a show and put that underneath the else. So when we are in the menu mode, we need to animate our buttons. So let's go to control and get out an if then else. Put that underneath the show. Now we're going to compare our menu index variable with our menu button selected variable. If they're the same, then the button knows it is currently selected and it needs to change its costume accordingly. So let's go to operators, get out an equals, put it in between our if and then, and go to variables, get out index for the first slot of our equals operator, and then menu button selected. Go to the looks category and pull out switch costume, put it underneath the if, and another switch costume and put it underneath the else. So under the if is when the button's been selected, under the else is when the button has not been selected. And we're going to use our index to keep track of which costume we should be switching to. So let's go to operators, pull out a plus operator, put it inside our switch costume and pull out another one, put it inside our other switch costume. Then we're going to go to variables, pull out an index and pop it right here and another index and pop it right here. 
Underneath the else, we are going to add one. And underneath the if, we are going to add five. This means if our index is zero, indicating that we are fight. When we are not selected, we are going to switch to costume zero plus one, which is one. And if we are selected, we are going to be costume zero plus five, which is five. And you'll notice that fight when it's not been selected is costume number one, and fight when it has been selected is costume number five. Now, one thing I almost forgot to do is wrap this whole thing in a forever loop. So let's do that now. Let's go to control, get out a forever, and put it right around this if then else. So this is what it should look like, and let's see if it works. Hey, there we go. Now we just need a way to switch to the evade mode. So let's go to the heart sprite and have a look for define menu. These are all the controls we have when we're in the menu mode. We're just gonna add something very simple on the bottom. We're going to get out an if then. We're going to go to sensing, get out a key space pressed. We're going to go to variables get out set mode to evade. Make sure that you spell this correctly. And we'll also make sure that the heart gets back inside the box. So let's go to motion, get out a go to x, y. Let's set the x to zero maybe, and the y to maybe minus 40. That sounds about right to be in the middle of that box. Now, if you've set up in your box sprite a bit of code that says when space key pressed, set ghost effect to 50, either delete this code or change the space um, to something else. Uh, let's say A. Uh, this is a useful bit of code that I think I recommended you make earlier, but we need to take this away so that our spacebar can be used for other things. So, let's give it a test. We're going to start the game. We start off in menu mode, which means that we can select different menu items. And currently we don't have these programmed, but if we hit spacebar, it should start the evade mode. So there we have a really good start on our menu system. Um, I'd recommend you go to your variables and untick the menu button selected variable. Go to your menu sprite and untick the menu index. But I would recommend you actually keep the mode variable visible because we're going to use that quite a lot as we build more and more functionality into our different um, menu buttons. As always, subscribe to see the next episode, ring the bell to see when we're doing live streams and that kind of thing. Stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.